Hey, welcome to a new kind of video from me. Um, recently, I've been getting into a little bit of MASH inside of Maya 2018. And um, uh, I put together a way to make infinite variations of foliage recently, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, I'm going to link uh, this guy's channel, Ian Waters, the guy who actually wrote MASH, because there are a whole bunch of really really interesting tutorials that he's put together and he's the actual guy who made it so you know it's just it's quality stuff all around um so here i'm in maya and you can see that i am just showing off uh some three variations of leaves um you know it's just some something basic just to uh, give you an illustration of what's going on so i've got three variations imagine they're leaves of a plant I'm just going to go ahead and create a mesh network. This is kind of how it comes out uh, at default. And I'm just going to go into the settings. You'll notice that um, these distribute nodes are uh, in, inside every mesh network. And as soon as I create a uh, mesh ID node, you can see that all three um, leaves are now visible. Uh, and then I create a random node. And here I'm just importing random values. Uh, this is going to build your uh, the plant that you will then use. So you can just play around with whatever uh, parameters you want, create, and make that kind of look you're going for. Uh, it's kind of not rotating the right way, but it doesn't really matter too much in this case. Of course, you'll want to, you know, tweak it the way you want uh, this bush or whatever you're making to look like. So I'm just tweaking a few more parameters. So here I've got a look that I'm okay with, and I'm just creating it, well, making an asset from it. You can see it's just de default settings for now. So I turn the DAG shapes off. And it's because I want to add these parameters to the asset and expose them. I turn the DAG shapes off again. And so what I'm doing here is now that these parameters are under the asset, I can actually publish them to the asset so they're exposed. So I'm just getting a couple of parameters. Publish to bush that's it. And yeah, I'll just be changing. Th this is not how I normally work. I, I have um, two monitors at work and a very large 4K screen at home. And um, I'll typically just have this on the other side of the monitor. You know, I like to look at a larger viewport. But here, you can see I'm in the timeline. And what I'm doing is what I want to have happen is start the point count at 12 here, key it, and then, you know, later on, frame 20, I want to just set a higher value and then just keep this linear uh, curve on the graph so that um, it can just cycle as long as the timeline goes for. So I just turn on infinity, infinity. You can see that it just it caps out at 15. We don't want that to happen, so we put this offset on it. You can see that that just continues to go on. And we do the same again on the random seed. Setting a keyframe at 2. Setting it up one value. So just having more random seeds in, inside of here. So as, as the uh, time slider goes on, we get a different seed each each time. So this is going to give you your, your variations. Um, now, w once we've got the, the procedural bush that we have, now we want to go about placing it and using it in the environment. So what we want to do is go ahead and create another mesh network Here we go again with the distribute node, getting back in there, removing that distance, and we want to distribute it 
on top of a mesh. So we just set that. I just uh, drag and drop the, the ground mesh here. Turn that on. Ig yeah, ignore ramps is tricky. It's just a whole bunch of playing around with values at this point. Just get a large amount of bushes on, on this plane here. And time seems to be the node that we want to play around with. Th this is going to spawn random ver uh, points of your bush on the, this uh, ground plane here. So we just turn the stagger up, random stagger. And you can already see that we've got some random uh, bushes here. I just increase the uh, end frame just so that there's more... Uh, bushes that it's going to sample and you can see as I drag the stagger frames that we're getting more random variations of bushes uh, present on, on the ground plane. Yes, yeah, so I'm just trying to get a good number. You just, you, you'll see that you encounter this kind of stuff where you see a lot of uh, duplication. Yeah, you really just want to go through and find a good number that works for you for the look that you're going for so I'm pretty happy with it here now I'll just go through and add another random node You'll find that MASH is just really powerful, um, and you can get away with a lot just with very few nodes. You know, just getting a uh, scale Y um, random parameter on that makes it makes it look really different. Yeah, and I'm really just tweaking it now. Um, but the main point is, you know, you can use that time node to then sample different parts of that asset on the ground plane. Here I am just spamming a whole bunch. Uh, yeah, that's that's going to do it for this video. I hope um, you, you artists out there can exploit this thing. Let's get a lot of random you know foliage on, on levels now. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and it's a very cheap and effective way to get you know foliage in a level. Thank you very much and catch you next time.